lighting a candle is a, is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. As we light the second candle of the Advent, we continue our journey to Christmas. The second candle of Advent is called the Peace Candle. As we anticipate Christmas, let us remember the birth of the Prince of Peace. Let us remember our need for our Savior to save us from our sins and give us peace with God. In Psalm 27, 1 through 2 and 13 and 14, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. People waited a long time to see prophecies about coming Messiah fulfilled, such as this one from Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and the peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time, this time, that time on and forever. The zeal, of the, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And when Jesus was born, in Luke it says, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those who in his favor rest. Scripture reminds us that the true peace comes from the Spirit of God dwelling it within us. In Colossians 3.15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Be thankful. Let us remember Christ's birth, commemorate his death and resurrection, and anticipate his glorious return. May God grant us his perfect peace. Talking about today is what do you talk about to sort of 
if you want to say, what is the thing you tell yourself over and over again? Like many, you get stuck in this sort of ongoing negative loop, right? We're always thinking these thoughts that are very negative. Now, I don't know if we have any negative people here. Most negative people won't admit that they're negative, but if you are in a sort of a loop, and that's what they call it, the sort of loop you get yourself in when you're always thinking these negative thoughts. Again, like I just said, you know, when you're driving down the road, do you, do you say, man, look at all these wonderful drivers, or do you say, hey, why are there so many idiots out driving today? You know, what do you think when you're out there? You know, when you get up in the morning, you're like, man, I got too much to do. And then when you get home, you're thinking, man, I didn't get anything done. The sort of negative loop that you put your mind in. You know, if you think about money, the only thing you ever think about is I'm always broke. I don't have enough. I never do have enough. I can't do the things that I want to do. Maybe it's in a relationship and you, you were around people and you'd say, well, I can't trust that person. I can't trust this person. And you, everybody that you know, you look at them with these eyes that say, man, what is that guy trying to get over on me? It's almost like you can't trust anyone, right? Or this mistake, you know, you make a mistake in your life and the thing you think in your mind is, man, I must be an idiot. I must be an idiot because I can't seem to get anything right. What do you say when you talk to yourself? And I think it's an important question is because what you say matters more than you can even imagine. What you're telling yourself on a daily basis, it affects so much about who you are. And the scripture sort of has a lot of things to say about this. And you'll see things like when you think, think on these things. Think about what's pure. Think about what's honest. So the Bible is always telling us when you think, think on these things. Don't get on the negative side. So here's a great one in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says this, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Can I read that again? Be careful what you think. Because your life, your life that you're living, is shaped by the thoughts that you have. So I asked you again, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What is this loop that you're in? Are you always thinking negative, negative, negative? Those negative thoughts, the Bible teaches, is they're taking you into this sort of life thing that you continue to uh, to get in this loop where you're continually going in the wrong direction. Here's what it is. The Bible, if, if you look at a lot of his scientists and what they say is this sort of called the law of, uh, of cognition. And what it is, what you think, think about this, what you think affects how you believe. Right? What you think in your mind, it affects what you believe. And what you believe affects how you feel. And how you feel affects how you live your life. Do you think, it's not, a big, it's not a big deal how I think? Yes, it is a big deal. That's why the Bible teaches you need to get the thinking right. Because if you don't get the thinking right, it's going to take you down a pathway, a pathway that in the end you may hate the life that you're living. You say, well, you know what? I make good money. I'm in a good, a good position at work. Man, I've seen people with all kinds of money, and I've seen people in good positions, and they're just terribly miserable. It's because they're not thinking the way the Bible teaches to think, that sort of biblical thinking. I love what the Bible has to say about how to think the life that we should do. Here's what Paul David Trapp said. He said this, or Paul David Tripp, he's an author, pastor, he says this, no one is more influential in your life than you are because no one talks to you more than you do. Amen? Did you hear what he's saying? No one talks to you more than you talk to yourself. And if you get talking to yourself in the wrong way, you will end up going into a life that you just literally hate. And you got to figure out how to get control of that thinking that's happening in your mind. Let me pray for you real quick. And I'm going to pray for myself. Dear Father, we do want to thank you that we have the opportunity today to look at your word. Lord, your word speaks volumes. Your word 
is the word of life. It tells us exactly what we need to hear. It tells us exactly how we need to live our life. It tells us all those things, Lord. And I'm glad, Lord, that your Bible sort of addresses this thing called mental health. I'm glad that your Bible begins to talk about and use his words to help us because, Lord, you knew. You knew there'd be times in our life that, Lord, our mind was sort of being affected by those that are around us, by the circumstances that we're in, by the events that happen in our life. And those things shape us. And if we're not careful, they'll shape us in the wrong direction. But we'll begin to think not the right way, but the wrong way. We'll get frustrated. We'll get mad at life. And then, Lord, we'll get mad at you. We'll blame you for the way our life has turned out. Lord, we'll blame people around us. And Lord, all of a sudden, relationships will be affected. The people that we love the most, Lord, all of a sudden, those things begin to be affected by this thing we call mental health. This mindset that we put ourselves in. Lord, we know that it's a trick of the devil. Lord, we know that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And the one thing he wants more than anything else is to get in our head. He wants to get where we, he wants to get those thoughts in our mind, allow them to land in our head. And Lord, he wants those to take, take root, Lord, and begin to grow into our hearts. So Lord, today, may we take your word seriously. May we see, Lord, today that, Lord, our thinking is more powerful than we can even imagine. So, Lord, open up your word today. Father, bind Satan from this place. Lord, this is your house. And these, this is your people. Today in this church sits your sons and daughters. Lord, we're living in a world, Lord, that is trying to force us down roads that sometimes we don't want to go on. And, Lord, we need to have a mindset. We need to have a biblical mindset that lets us stand on the fact that we, on the, on the things that we believe more than anything else. So today, Lord, help us to discover your word and help us to grow from it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How many would agree with this? The world seems more, it, it seems to be coming more and more and more negative. How many would agree with that? It seems like it just gets more and more and more negative. It's hard to find the positive there anymore. You just can't look around and find it. But it's not just a practical problem. Man, I believe it's a spiritual problem. Your thoughts have incredible power. Now let's look at this scripture that we talked about that Johnny read. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Let's go back and look at this. And we're going to read it and see what it says here. Because there's a good news there and there's some bad news. Right? So the bad news is this. It's pretty plain. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. When it uses the word flesh, there's a Greek, called, a Greek word called psalm. And it just basically means that sinful nature. The, th the thought, your thought pattern is, is set up by the world that you're living in. And we know that the world that we live in lies in the, de in the lap of Satan. So if we have this sinful nature and we have this sinful way of thinking, and it's that nature that we have, if we go down that road, the Bible teaches that oh, well, at the end of it is dead. That's what the scripture teaches. Even Romans said that. In the end there is of death, right? We think, we, in, in Proverbs it says, we think this way, we think it's the right way, it appears the right way, and that's where we are. We look around and things appear to be right. I mean, it appears to be okay to believe that way. But the end the Bible teaches is death because it comes from a sinful way of thinking. Let me tell you, your way of thinking matters. And what you believe matters. So when you talk about, when he talks about that sinful nature, when he talks about that flesh, if you lean into that and you go in that direction, the Bible teaches all that left is death. That makes sense, right? That's the bad news. So if you keep living the way you're living with that kind of mindset, right, it's going to kill, maybe not physically, but it could. It can lead you to a place where it can kill relationships. It can kill uh, what you believe, the dreams that you have. I mean, there's so many things that the devil can use as you go down that road. So death is not just a physical death. It can be the death of a lot of different things. But then he says this. Watch. 
But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death and darkness and destruction, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and what? Peace. Peace. Everybody say that word. Peace. Don't you want to live in this sort of state of peace? Right? How many want to live in the state of peace? Now, what the Bible's teaching you here is that you can live there. Matter of fact, it even goes even further if you go into some other scriptures. It says, man, if you cast those anxieties on you, and we learned that a couple weeks ago, all those things that you're facing, you throw them toward God. He brings about a peace that transcends even the understanding of those around us. They don't understand in the midst of everything you're in, you're still rising to a place of peace. They don't get that. It's because they live in a different world as far as a mindset than you set, you live. You're living in the Spirit. And when you're in the Spirit, Christ in you, man, you can live at that level even in the midst of the enemies all around you. Remember Psalm 23? He sets the table up and the enemies are all around you. Here you are in the presence of God and you're eating supper, man. You're eating all that good stuff. Even though the enemy is there crawling around, you can still have peace. Somebody here say amen. amen. Somebody kick your foot up and say glory, hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's awesome preaching. Can you see that? So it's hard for us to see it because a lot of us aren't living there the way God promises that you can live. So how do you do that? Well, today i got three goals. Here's my three goals, and we're going to go real fast, right? And you know that fast means preacher language. Everybody understands that, right? So here's my go today. What I do is I want to quantify. Everybody say quantify. I want to show you your, how negativity works. Because it is working. I mean, turn on the TV. Go around some of your friends. <clears throat> pick up the newspaper, if it's still out there. And just pick up your favorite news app. There's negative everywhere, right? And we're going to show you how that negativity works. Second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify. I'm going to help you see areas in your life that negativity is killing. Let me say it again. I'm going to show you some areas in your life that negativity is killing. So I believe that, that there are things that happen every single day in the world that you're living in, that you personally live in every single day, and that's where that negativity sits into your heart. It could be through relational, it could be through circumstance, but those things are happening in your life. And you may be a very, very negative person and you don't even know it. Because in that mindset, right, and we're going to show you where those areas are. And the last thing is we're going to detoxify. Everybody say detoxify. detoxify. We're going to show you how to change the negativity with God's help. Everybody say woo. woo. All right, let's have some fun here. So how does the negativity work in your life? Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. I believe that negativity is going to contaminate your thinking. Why is negativity so toxic? Would you agree with me that negativity is a very toxic thing? How many love to just hang out with very negative people? Anybody here? I mean, that's your favorite thing to do. You just like to get around people that are always super negative. You want to be around them. I mean, how many likes that? Oh, okay, nobody. Nobody wants to do that, right? So here's the thing. Here's what neuroscience says, right? Everybody say neuroscience. <laughs> Come on, let's get with it today. Neuroscience, what it says is negative events, negative events imprint on our brains more quickly and linger longer than positive ones. Let me prove it to you. Alright? Very simple. You get on social media. Most people know what that is. They may, anybody know what everybody know what social media is? All right, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to be honest. Are you ready? What travels faster on social media, negative or positive? Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Man, I can get on that Blanchard Facebook page, 
And dude, if you want to see, you'll get more comments on something negative than you will ever positive. Can I get an amen? Y'all may not know about that. I don't get on there. I'm just saying I have a friend that does. <laughs> but I mean, you think about it, it travels very, very. It's because that's the way negativity works. It's just, it's just imprints on your brain. And you throw it out there, right? You have a, let's say you have a news app, maybe KTBS or anything like that. Right, you get on it, what usually has the most comments? Something very negative. When you hear about something, maybe you heard this week that the girl on channel on CBS had an affair. I mean, you're on there trying to figure out what in the world is going on, right? You hear about this guy that plays football, man, he done beat up his girlfriend, right? And he's holed up in a house somewhere. And what are you doing? You're trying to find who's that it's gotta be on, you know, you don't do that, do you? Nobody does that. You, you, you find out something negative, right? You find out bad news and you don't go look for it. You don't go say, hey, I wonder what happened. What caused this bad stuff to happen? I know some of you do. And I know that I'm not, I'm just saying there's something about negative that we want to know more about it. There's something about negative news. It's crazy how we want to learn that stuff, how we want to know that. Man, let me ask you another one. Now, I don't know if you're this way, but let's just say you give a presentation at work, right? I mean, it is awesome. Everybody in the room, almost everybody comes to you and say, let's say you have 10 people. They come to you and say, man, you did a great job. Man, I love that. But then there's one person that comes up and says, man, that stinks. Let me go, let me ask you a question. When you go home, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about what? You're thinking about that one person that was critical and was very critical of what you did. Why is that? It's crazy. You've had 10 people tell you it's the best presentation ever, and then you have one person that walks in and says, that's the worst ever. It just stuck the whole time. I almost threw up. And you're going to think about that. Because let me tell you, that's how negativity works. There's something about it that gets up in your head. There's something about it that just, it's chronic negativity. Let me tell you what it does. The problem with negativity, man, it assaults God's peace. It, it, it just, the brain is designed, right? It is designed. What it does, it sends this cortisol. Everybody say cortisol, right? And what it does, I mean, I've been working on this sermon series Say we're impressed, preacher. Nobody's impressed. I mean, I've been studying the brain. I want to be ready for this. I want to know how the brain works. And I find it amazing how the brain works. I don't understand how anybody, if you're an atheist, all you got to do is go study the brain and it'll change you forever because how that brain does that is just amazing. You can't tell me a big bang made a brain act the way it does. It is crazy what the brain does. Can I get a little baby amen? I mean, it is. I mean, the brain, remember I told you about that little almond, that little walnut shaped thing that tells you if there's something going on, and boom, it goes off me. Alert, 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 something's wrong. What are you thinking of that? Right? You hear some noise in the woods, right? Boom, you hear it, and you, why do you think you do that? Because God made you that way. So all of a sudden you feel that, and what that, that cortisol does, it gets into your bloodstream, right? And it lets you know something's not right. It sends this in your blood, even your blood system just like goes crazy, right? You know something's not right. The problem is if you stay there, right? And you stay there, and you stay there, and you stay there, and you never graduate from it, and you're always in the sense of looking for the negative. And you never look for the positive in your life. Right? Paul said it this way, the mind is governed by the flesh, but the spirit is governed by the, 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 the you, you need to be governed by the mind, the mind that's on the spirit is governed by that, and it has the peace that we need. So negativity, it has a way of changing the script in your life, right? So why, I think that's why it's so important to understand how negativity works. I mean, I've seen too many people whole life 
begin to happen and go in the wrong direction because an event that's happened in their life by what somebody has said to them in their lifetime, right? Even though there's people that are telling you you're doing a great job, maybe you, you've come a long ways in your life, but there's other people that are speaking words into your head, and because those people are speaking words in your head, you've allowed them to take root into your heart. And that's the negativity, right? That's how negativity works. It wants to take you off the script that God has for your life, the narrative. God has a narrative for your life, Amanda. He has a, a narrative. He has a plan. And all the devil wants to do is take you off of that narrative. So he can bring the right circumstance, bring the right person, bring the right event into your life, and he'll use that circumstance, that event, that person, to take you off the script. And what happens is if he uses negativity to continually make a negative thing happen in your life, boom, you're off script. Right? That's how it works. So let me give you real quickly the second thing, and then I'm going to finish this off with some really good stuff. Here it is. So what are those areas in your life that negativity is using? So we can't, when you recognize, you can't recognize, you can't recognize, <coughs> whoa, you can't, you recognize you can't defeat what you don't define, right? You can't defeat what you can't define or you won't define. So where, where are some of the areas in your life? <laughs> some of those may be relational. You become very cynical. There's a general distrust of people. In your life right now, when you think about your life, are you very cynical? Have you gotten to the place in your life that you're just very cynical of people? When you look at people, you don't trust them. When you get around other people, you, you automatically have a distrust about them. Right? That's one of the areas that happens in negativity. There's these four little buckets that most scholars, most experts will tell you. Some of that becomes when negativity has set into your life and you're very, you sort of like got in this negativity loop, right? You're there, right? You're there. What happens is you become very, very cynical. So the question is, are you there? When you get around most people, you just don't trust them. No matter who it is. Somebody tells you something, you don't even believe it. You become very cynical of other people in your life. That's one area that negativity, to know that you're at that place of negativity, there it is. The other thing is you're very, a negative, negative filtering they call it. Negative filtering. You go to a restaurant, you don't look at the good things it does, you look for everything that's bad. Well, you know what? The service was terrible today. Even though the meal was good, you're looking for the negative. Well, you know, did you see, did you see the way that, that table was set up? Did you see they had the flower on theirs but didn't have a flower on mine? You're very negative, right? You're always looking, coming to church, man, the church was pretty good, the music was fair, but the preacher, that guy needs to get another job. <laughs> so you come in here, and it's almost like you got a school card. But you're always looking for the negative, right? So I put this little plan over here by itself today, and we have a beautiful church, right? How many noticed that this thing was out of place? We had a couple, right? And that's okay. It should be over with rest because I moved it over. But it's amazing that we have a beautiful church that's beautifully decorated. This looks awesome. Can I get an amen? But we've gotten to a place and Cindy, I'm not saying this about you. I'm just saying it's kind of interesting that we always, the thing that we notice is the things that are wrong. We don't never notice what's happening in the life. <coughs> We can do that with our kids. I mean, our kids are doing a great job. What do we do? We focus on the negative. That stuff gets in your head. You need to be, you need to be telling them the good stuff they're doing too. Sure, tell them about the bad stuff. Help them with the bad stuff. But my goodness, tell them about the good stuff. But if all you do is look for the negative and you're just a negative person, let me tell you, negativity has got you. You have gotten into a mindset that you can't see anything that's good anymore in your life. It has set in. Does that make sense? 
It's negativity filtering. That's what happens. We need to see that God is doing great things. It's easy to look in our world and say, man, our world is going to hell in a hat basket. Can I get an amen? <laughs> it's easy to look at that. But I am determined. Can I get an amen? I am determined to believe. Somebody say amen. I am determined to believe that God is still in control. I don't care who's in control in the country, in the world. I'm telling you, my God sits on the throne and he's in control. Can I get an amen? We got to be careful because we can get in this sense of negativity and that's where we stay. I mean, you know those people. It doesn't take, let me tell you another area. You have this sort of absolute thinking, right? You're right and everybody else is wrong. I know we don't have anybody like that here. <laughs> don't look at your neighbor. Keep looking up here. We, we have an absolute, let me tell you, this is where our country is, right here. You know, if the Republicans say something you don't like, all Republicans are bad. And if the Democrats say something you don't like, guess what? All Democrats are bad. Man, if a woman lies to you, every woman's a liar. If the guy cheats on you, every man's a cheater. It's an absolute thinking. Right? We are in a place, I don't, I'm going to tell you again, I, this is not a political church, this is a Jesus church. You will not hear me talk about Democrats and Republicans. I hope I'm always standing up and shouting about Jesus because in the end, I don't care about the Republicans, I don't care, care about the Democrats, because they sure ain't going to get me into heaven. Only Jesus can do that. Amen. Can I get an amen? Don't make me start preaching now. <laughs> Come on. But... People are there. And if that's the way you think, be careful. You're in a very negative area. There's good people all over the world. There's good people in our country. There's good Republicans and there's good Democrats. Can I get an amen, church? I mean, I'm telling you, they're everywhere. There are good people everywhere. It doesn't matter. Now, there are some bad ones. But we're not mentioning them today. That's a whole other sermon. It's absolute thinking. Are you thinking that way? You see, that's an area that you could be in a negativity trap. Absolute thinking. Everybody's wrong. I'm right. Be careful if you're there. Here's the last one is this. It is this. It's persistent blaming. Right? You develop this sort of victim mentality. Anybody ever do that? Well, the only reason I'm in the shape that I am, you know what? I'm just this way because my mom and dad didn't raise me right. If they had raised me right, I'd be a different person. Man, if, I wouldn't have, if that wouldn't have happened in my life, you know what? I'd be okay. You're, you're in a blaming place. Everything about your life, you blame other people for it. And that's one of the signs of negativity has set up in your heart and in your mind. You better be careful. So how do we get out of this? Well, the Bible has a great way of teaching this, right? It's pretty neat what it has to say. And I'm going to say this real quick, and then we'll be done. I think the first thing is you've got to convert that negativity loop into a positive change. It's kind of interesting. I, was being, I don't know if you ever listened to TED Talk. They did this thing the other day I thought was kind of cool, right? So they, they had these two groups of people, group one, group two, and they, they gave them this sort of surgery. It was a makeup surgery, but they were trying to test these group groups, right? So they went, there was one group that said that when you have this surgery, there's a 70% of, of, the, of positive here. 70%. So the other group, they would say there's a 30% that is very negative, something negative would happen. Same thing, different, different narrative, right? You heard that, right? Well, yes, 70%. They say, oh, positive, it's going to be good. 30%, well, what we're going to do is negative. 
Well, you know what happened? The group that you tell positive, they're like, I do that surgery. 70%, you better believe it. The other group they went to and they said, hey, 30% negative. Oh, we don't want to do it. So they did what they did is they switched it. They went back to the group and said, yeah, there's a 70% chance that something positive, but there's 30% that something negative can happen. Just what they did. I don't want to do it. Went back to the group that you told that 30 something percent was negative. Switch and say, man, 70% something positive. Guess what they did? I don't want to do it then. What happened there? Same narrative you just switched it. You see that? You just switched it, right? Let me tell you what. The narrative that is going on in your life right now, whatever it is, you may have to switch it. Because what you're doing is, you're not even picking up God's Word and reading it. Now, I don't mean to be mean, but I'm going to be mean, right? And that's only because God said today I could be mean, but I'm going to say positive. I am positively mean today. Is that possible? See, I'm telling you right now, if all you're doing is all your narrative, look up here. Every bit of your narrative in your life is coming from the social media, if it's coming from the television, if it's coming from movies, if it's coming from music. Let me tell you what, if that's your narrative, no wonder you're so negative. You've got to get away. You're not putting anything in there that's coming from God's Word. Your narrative is thrown off. You listen to some music, man, you'd be a drunk all the time. Man, I've been talking about is drinking and having parties, right? You say, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, if that's your narrative, when's the last time you picked up God's Word? Don't tell me you ain't got time because you're on social media most of the time. You need to make time for it. Come on. Amen. Amen. You're preaching today. Woo! Get out there, preaching. <laughs> Come on. Your narrative is thrown off. Right? What are you allowing into your mind? You let stinking stuff in your mind, stinking stuff will come out. Amen. What comes in, what? It's going to go out. And if you're not taking the time to meditate, well, that's number two. Right? Number one is you got to get, you got to get, change the narrative. Right? Change the narrative. And that's God's word. Number two is this. You got to start acting like a cow. Amen? Amen. Y'all give us that the hand. <laughs> you say, what do you mean? You, ever, you know what a cow does. I think the word is ruminate, ruminate, ruminate. Ruminate. So what he does, it's the coolest thing in the world. He'll go eat grass, swallow it, and spit it back up, throw it back up into his mouth. Then he'll eat it again, right? And then swallow it and throw it back up into his mouth. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that just grows in. And then he'll eat it again and finally swallow it. You know what he's doing? He's trying to get all the nutrition out of that food he can. That's all he's doing. I mean, he's like, wait a minute, I didn't, let me get a little bit more. I'm just telling you that's how it works. Getting everything out of it. To me, I think we need to act like a cow with God's Word. You read it, you meditate on it. You let God's Word come through. You know what? I am in a very negative world. I've got negative friends. I'm, that's where I'm at, right? But you, if you're around negative people all the time, Man, and you're in a very negative environment, a, de a very negative events happening in your life, you better get in God's Word. That's your only, that is your only hope right now. It is the only hope you have. Because what happens is, it's a bit, the Bible just told you, you're not focusing on the flesh now, that sinful nature, you're focusing on the Spirit of God. And what happens is the renewal takes place. The peace sets in. And like I said, remember our little story last week in the Lord's, when we had the, the table, right? The enemy's all around you. Right now, look up here. Right now in your life, you are surrounded by the enemy. I don't know who you are. I don't know why, you, why you're here today. But maybe the Lord brought you in today to tell you, you are surrounded 
by these events, by these people, and man, they are slowly destroying who you are. And you need to get at the table that God has prepared for you. You need to get into the Word of God. Amen? So here's number three. Watch this. So you start acting like a cow, and then you take a negativity fast. All right, some of y'all need to take a negativity fast. What does that mean? You need to quit listening to... Get off social media for a week. Some of y'all would have a heart attack. Let me tell you what. You get on that... I'm telling you, I don't mean... I'm, I'm, I'm not a social media person. Go to my Facebook page and you'll see I'm not a very... And I'm sorry, I just don't do it. All right? And then you get on there and you start looking at it and you look at what so and so's doing and you get mad at them and you get jealous of them. This person over here is doing that, right? And you get mad at them and boy, by the time 30 minutes later, you're ready to choke somebody. Somebody that says something you don't like, somebody that made you mad, right? I'm telling you, some of you need to take a social media fast. Get off of it. Because it has got you in a mindset that's very negative. By the time you get to work, you're ready to punch out your boss. Amen. Amen. You know, he looks at me wrong. Come here. Some of y'all need to take a negativity fast from your friends. Man, if those friends are taking you down a road, look. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you get mad or what. But listen to me. God has a narrative for your life. But if that friend set that you have, those friends that are surrounding you, man, if they are if they are constantly bringing you to a place that you walk away and you feel terrible about yourself, you feel terrible about even being around them, you get finished with them and you just want to beat yourself up, they, they then put you in a place, this mindset of just defeat. You need to take a friend a negative. You need to take a friend fast. You need to get away from them for a little while. I'm not saying forget about them. I'm just saying you need to back up away from those people, right? I mean, you need to take that kind of fast. I don't know what. I'm going to ask you to stand. We got something exciting happening this year in just a few minutes. But before we get there, what's most important is what's happening in this room. What God's doing. Okay. I had to take a negativity fast from a lot of things. I am one of those, right, that I can be put in a mindset real quick if I'm not careful. I, I mean, I can be in a room, I can go to a board meeting. I've got one board member, I'm not going to say if it's a church or a library in case somebody, are we recording this? So anyway, we are, so I'm not going to tell you what, I'm, I'm just going to forget that illustration. But I have a, a group of people that I'm around, right, I'm around these people. And I, I can have everybody in that group say, man, good job, you're doing good, keep doing it. And then there'll be that one person that just, uh, just attacks. Boom, attacks. And I'm telling you, I can walk away from that movie, I mean, that, that meeting, just like I told you, and for a whole week, all I'm thinking about is what that one person said. I can't get it out of my head. Right? And the devil uses that, Cindy. He does. He will use that in my head. And you've got to be careful. And I don't know about what's going on in your life. But I'm going to ask you to bow your head. Because I think we all face the temptation of allowing negative thoughts and negative people to change the script of our life. God has a plan for you. The plan is for you to prosper. The Bible teaches. The plan is for you to prosper, to have a good life. Right? That's where God designed you to be. He has a narrative for your life. And the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy everything about that narrative. And right now, there's people here that God is trying his best to get you back on the narrative that he created for you. But the devil has brought people into your life, brought events into your life, from circumstances, you're in a, an environment where all of a sudden all you feel is this negativity. And let me tell you what, it is affecting you in a great way. Lord, I pray for each person that's here today. I do, Lord. I lift them up. So because I know that this is one area that I struggle with a lot. And Lord, 
The only way that I've ever found hope in a situation like this is, man, I have to stay in your word. I have to stay there. I have to read it. I have to study it. Lord, I have to find the great promises. There's so many great things your Bible teaches. I have to go to those. And when I find that peace, Lord, that comes from you, it's only because, man, I found your promise. What you promised in my life and in my family, Lord, in my walk. And when I find that, Lord, I find the peace that's beyond what I can even understand. And with nobody looking around, I gotta ask you a question. And maybe the Lord has spoken to you today. Maybe, maybe the devil is playing tricks on you right now. Got you in a spot right now where you just can't seem to shake it. I want, I want, I want you to raise your hand. Man, God spoke to me today. Thank you. All right, good. I see that. I'm gonna pray for you. Lord, you've seen hands go up throughout this congregation. Lord, my hands out there with them. Lord, I pray that you would begin to work in each one of these individuals' lives. Lord, you know exactly what they're going through. Lord, you know what they're up against. You know the voices that they keep telling themselves. Lord, they're, they're talking to themselves. And it seems like as they talk to themselves, all they talk about is the negative things that are happening around them. And today, they search for you. Lord, you've given us a perfect plan. Lord, you've given us a perfect avenue. Lord, if we reach out and grab your word, read your word, Lord, it will help us find that peace. It's not easy. It's hard. It's tough. Lord, to change the narrative in our life is never easy. Sometimes you have to let go of the things that seem to be your security. You have to let go of them. You have to shake them. And Lord, it's tough. So, Lord, I pray for that one today that really is trying to find, Lord, where you need them to be. I pray you give them strength. I pray you give them power. Lord, help them to have power over their the, the thought life in their life. And we thank you for what you do because we know you're going to find, you're going to help them find the victory that they need. And Lord, we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.